Hello guys and welcome back to a new Spring Boot Security episode. Today we are going to continue the GVT part and I'll present you the sample application that we're going to use and also the point dependencies that you need to enable JSON Web Tokens authentication in a Spring Boot application. Now before we get started, I would like to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Okay, just fired up IntelliJ and we'll take a look at our sample app. Now, remember from the previous episode, um, for form-based authentication and for you know, HTTP basic, we used an MVC app. So we had views, we had REST endpoints, but what we had was an application that you know, we compiled it, we packaged it as a WAR, and then we could you know, deploy it anywhere. We had one deployment unit, an MVC app. But when you use JVT, you, you will not have that. You will have you know, one or more application applications that contain your business logic and then customers, clients, uh, client apps that will consume the um, APIs that you expose. So that's where GVT comes to play. And what we'll build here is we are going to build an application that will contain both the authentication part and the business logic. Okay, you can have one or we can split them in one or more apps, but for convenience, we are going to use a single application. <coughs> So, this app is going to expose free REST endpoints, you know? So, um, we have a REST endpoint that is going to be available for all authenticated users, you know, just to write some strings. We have another endpoint at API public dash management dash reports that is going to return some report data. And, you know, let's give it a more meaningful name. And then we have a third endpoint hosted at uh, api-public-admin-users, which is going to retrieve all the users that we have in our database and you know return them as as you know a JSON array. Okay, so we have a simple controller. It's it's a REST controller, so we don't have any views here, and this controller exposes free endpoints. And we are going to play with these endpoints, and we are going to provide different you know authorization rules to them. One important thing that you need to be aware of is that when you are using when you are building application or APIs that are going to be you know that are going to expose endpoints to other apps, you need to enable course or you know cross origin. And in uh, in Spring Boot you will do that by adding the at cross origin annotation uh, to your controller. Okay? So now our application now exposes these free endpoints. It's an API and this is what you'll use as a sample app. Now, everything else that we had previously, meaning, you know, the, the definition of the user, the user principle, the user detail service, the user, the user repository, the database, uh, database init part, all of those are still in our application. So we are storing our users in a database and we are using the database provider to, to in a GVT context. So uh, that's not gone. That's still present. Also, what's still present is the HTTPS um, configuration. So those things are not changed. You know, if you want HTTPS, if you want database provider for you know your users, um, you know those things you can use them regardless of the authentication and authorization mechanisms that you lose. So we use them in HTTP Basic. We use them in form-based authentication, and we are still going to use them in JVT. So a lot of things remain the same. What doesn't remain the same are the views. So in the previous episodes, we used examples, you know, we had multiple controllers and we had views here, you know, in static and in templates. Well, because we are now just building an API uh, application, we do not need to use views here. So we won't have any view whatsoever in here. Our application just exposes REST controllers and our application will handle both uh, security and the business logic, you know, via this controller that I've just shown here. Okay, now let's fire this application and see, you know, that these endpoints work. I have no security whatsoever now, so the authentication provider, you know, is the, is the database provider that we've used previously. But then for security, you know, uh, we are authorizing every request and we are permitting, we are allowing access to every request without authentication. So the sample app is not secure now, 
and in the next episodes we are going to secure it using you know JVT. Okay, so the application is started. We'll go here and we'll go to localhost 8082. We are going to get uh, sorry. Okay, uh, well because it's a uh, uh, it's a REST app, you know we, we no longer have a home page. Okay, so we actually need to navigate to that specific endpoint. So it's API public and I think it's test okay and now we have the string API test and we have another thing for you know we have API public and I think it's admin users and we have all the users displayed here okay so the app works we have no security whatsoever enabled but you know the sample app is up and running now regarding uh, the dependencies that you will need uh, to implement JVT well it's not a lot of things that we need to do. We just need to, um, you know, we just need to add uh, a library that handles JVT tokens. So the creation of the token, the the lifecycle of the token. You need a library that handles JVT, and there are multiple libraries out there. Uh, I have chosen this one. You know, the Java JVT uh, dependency from com .auth zero. So it's a pretty nice library. And it makes working with JVT tokens very, very easy. But like I said, this is just one library to use with JVT. There are multiple ones available and you can choose another one should you want to. But throughout this course, we're going to use this one. Okay, so as it stands out, our application is not secure, but it is ready. It has everything it needs in order to allow JVT to be implemented as a security mechanism. And in the next episodes, we are going to do just that. We're going to secure our app using JSON Web Tokens. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.RomanianCoder.com Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.